right, this next call here has a set of bad electric elements. It's a 25kW old train unit. It's pretty old. Problem is, it's going to get down to 8 degrees in the next day or two. And they had some bad elements. And basically, they wanted to just restring it and get it uh, up and going. So we're gonna put that in new, and we're gonna put new electric sequencers in. It'd been nice to have some numbers, but I don't have any. So generic thing I did was put dots on there, and then mark those two with dots or with numbers on the location of where they go. You can actually use universal stuff, which good old Mars and Honeywell. You can get, uh, just rebuild it and get it back up and going. Wasn't the cheapest option in the world, but it will work. And basically we just do what they ask. One or two is good, but they're all pretty in bad shape. So what I did to make it a little easier to get it out was just kind of cut it in little sections, pulled it out. Restringing it though is not the fun part. Definitely not the easiest thing in the world to do. But it's not the hardest either. So you basically got a, what looks like a spring, but it's not. Length 44.62, minimum 127.48 max. So you kind of got to stretch her out a little bit and kind of guesstimate how many times it's going to take to get it to do it. I'm sure it'd be kind of a a little easier maybe if we measured that. So about 13 inches. Let's go 12 inches. One, two, three, four. Four of them. So let's go four foot and see where that puts us at. And it's pretty well right at four foot because once you've stretched it too long, it doesn't work real great. So we'll go ahead and straighten this up as best we can to make it easier to feed. And I'm going to start the middle one here. I have not done this very many times, so we're going to learn together. There we go. There's that. One thing you definitely want to be careful of is over tightening these. And as always, good crimp-ons are nice to have. I had to redo one of them already. These get brittle because you figure they're pulling 22 amps on average through here. This is a 230 volt system. Here's another one with like a little square bolt and it fits just the same way. So we'll go ahead and feed that one through. that feed that through there we go actually it looks like the lock washer goes on first then the spade terminal then the nut all right that'll make it a little easier Okay, come back up, feed it through here to this one. I don't know if there's any good tricks to these at all. Luckily, like I said, I haven't had to do this very often. It's kind of doggone close. So it comes through there. Okay, you can see here they got the little square edge and the square on the back that holds the electric element there and it comes on through. You may need a little more of a stretch, but it's easier to stretch it than it is to shrink it because once you stretch it too big, it doesn't do so well. And 
you got to be aware of what your wires are getting close to because you've got metal all around it. And that can make a snap, crackle, pop. Now you want to make sure you don't have any sags or dips and things like that. You want to make sure you got plenty of clearance around your metal uh, framework and things. And you want to make sure it's pretty well all uniformed. Also, your hands are supposed to be clean, which mine really aren't. It's hard to have clean hands when you've got a nasty miss is what this is. So what I'm going to do when I get done is I'm just going to spray it off with some brake cleaner. Now it'll get any oils off that way. It's perfectly clean. There won't be no hot spots on it. It uh, could potentially burn it out according to what the instructions say. Uh, I don't really care to find out if that's true or not. I would assume it's similar to a halogen bulb with greasy fingers. Uh, so we're just not going to take a chance. And we've got them all in now. So we're good to go. Uniformly stretched. Now it's got to go back up in there. But first we've got to change these sequencers. We're going to change those now before we get the elements back in place. There's not a whole lot of room in here. And then as far as the sequencer, it's just the standard Honeywell R8330D 1039. These are massively overpriced, but they give you a total of three elements. You got your fan, and then you've got your switch that allows you to put the next sequencer afterwards. That way everything stages one by one by one, and you don't have a big inrush of current. This is gonna suck ass, I can tell. Right out. There's so many freaking wires that there's no way in heck I'm gonna sit there and rip all these freaking things off and then try to figure out where they went. Not gonna happen. This end switch here relays the 24 volts on to the next sequencer so that you can have multiples. That one's loose. That's going to need replaced. Chances are, yeah, see, that's what happens. They snap right off. So. Well, every one of these was loose, so you always want to make sure you check your lugs on your breakers. Uh, it's aluminum, so it gets hot, it loosens up. Just got to double check a few things there. Most of it's pretty well where it needs to be at. One by one, sometimes the easiest way. It's kind of generic, but you're less likely to make a mistake than be wondering, like, where am I going to put this wire at? Kind of like this one right here. I don't know where it goes. It's not marked. It must have came off. Finally got it back in there. As you can see, it looks a little generic, but some of them I wrote seven, some of them I put seven dots, five dots. When I started getting too many, I just started writing the numbers up in there. So that's uh, all back into place. We got these tightened up. We're gonna kick it on, we're gonna stand back, make sure everything's good. We got quite a few of them that we replaced. Uh, you gotta be careful about re-squeezing down some of these because a lot of times they'll be brittle and break. So a lot of times I'll just chop them off. Just depends on how old the equipment is, whether it was in the weather, you know, was it very loose before? Cause as soon as it gets loose, it gets hot. It just breaks down. All right, we just got done staging it down. We have five elements that we replaced. We marked them out here. First stage was the top left, bottom right, and the center one. Second stage was top right and bottom left. And uh, we went ahead and marked the date in there and everything, and it just shut off and it felt cool, so it was kicking on and off as it was. We tried it first stage, and that brought on just the three elements, then the second stage brought on the other. So that's how you do a element change and sequencer swap out. Nothing real hard about it, but it's how you do it. Yeah. 